Oh, here we go. Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. We got Orange Go 55 and Jalen and Indiana Jones down below. You are a little horizontal, Jalen. Just saying. I am trying to get to <laughs> And today, we're going to talk about some great, great stuffies. I can't believe you have still so much to talk about with Disneyland closed. Well, outdoor dining is back. I went yesterday. You should check out the video in the link above. Jalen Orange Grove. I forgot your name, even though it's sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go check this out? I feel like you guys haven't been ever. Um, I definitely am because it's one step closer to actually being inside and it being normal, kind of. So I definitely am going to make an appearance. Yeah, I I want to. I haven't. I confession. I, I still haven't been to Downtown Disney since they were months know. ago. <laughs> I still haven't been. Um, you know, and I live just as far as you do, Ethan. You know, so there's no excuse for me. I'm, I'm an hour away too. You know? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I I want to. Um, and now with Buena Vista Street being open and stuff, it it, it makes it even a little bit more worth it. So, absolutely. Yeah, it's so nice. It's only $10. And, you know, if you guys saw the video, the ducks were trying to eat my churro. I've never been so close to a duck in my lifetime. It was great. Except he got <laughs> really, he started sticking his head, like, got this close to me. I'm like, okay, hold on. I, I was in my churro. But, <laughs> wow, those ducks aren't scared of anything. Great stuff. Um, but yeah, when I went yesterday, there's so many outdoor dining things open. I think the Disney stuff opens a little later on because they have to recall those people. But we should all go next weekend. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Do like a like a vlog. Yeah, all, all three, all three of us vlogging from uh, downtown Diz. Yeah. Yes. Be, yes. Hmm. be there next Saturday, February fifth. I think that's it. Six. So, with these vaccines and these lowering case numbers, do you guys see a light at the end of our dark tunnel, Jalen? I do. I and um, it's kind of not the exact way that um, people expected it, to, or at least most people expected it to be. Like you know, it's just gonna disappear. Because that's what I think a lot of people think is going to happen is that it's just going to be disappearing. And then, you know, zippy doo we're back to being normal. Like, I think we'll have that same type of moment, but it's not going to be the way that it, it, it's going to be more of a, like an a alternate. Like, yeah, it's still around, but we're, we're safe. So we don't have to be, you know, trapped in our houses no more. Like, we're able mm -hmm. to experience the things we did before COVID. Um, but I do see it noticing, I've been noticing a lot of more things. I've been opening more um, cases, obviously. It's like, um, I think we're one step forward. So I see a, a lot of light. Oh, me too. What do you think, Chris? Um, yeah, no, I, I think Jalen hit the nail on the head when he said that we're going to get more normal, but not back to normal mm -hmm. you know so like you know i think it's going to kind of be like what what happened after 9 11 right like we got back to normal but the normal was a little different now we have mm -hmm. bag checks now we have mm -hmm. screenings now we have right. you know life changed yeah we're back to normal but it's not the same normal pre 9 11 and i think COVID is going to be very similar to that mm -hmm. like Jalen touched upon where you know yeah i mean we're not going to be like you know all like you know wearing masks every day and social distancing and everything but there's going to be changes that i think stick around for a long 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 time well after the COVID situation is over with yeah like and the biggest one like i think life. yeah and those biggest changes i personally say will be the reservation things and the uh, the cashless payment things. Because those are things that are already kind of happening before the token. And I, partic I particularly like the cashless payment things like the, the, um, the Apple Pay and stuff like that because that just 
eat much, so much fa and the mobile order so much faster. So I'm glad those things that will hopefully be sticking around and accelerate. Reservations, eh. But we'll get to that when we talk about our annual membership program later on. <laughs> uh, first, we have, I saw your video on that. Good video on that, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you, the, you're right about the mobile ordering, like for food and stuff. Like I was actually like, I wasn't like on board when I heard it. I'm old school with that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I just walk up and, and just order my food. But like, mm -hmm. I've, I tried that a few times um, in Galaxy's Edge, the mobile ordering. And it was mm -hmm. like, so convenient. Like, you just punch it in. They text you when it's ready. You walk up, you grab your food. It's so easy. I, I am in love with mobile over ordering. I, I can't go back now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's been times where like I'm on the other side of the park, like in New Orleans Square somewhere, and I'm a order for um Pizza Planet. And it is like it's almost like a fast pass. Like I just I can literally be in New Orleans Square, mobile order, walk over there and just grab my food and without waiting in line or anything. It's like so convenient. It's That's awesome. It is it's fast pass for food. In fact, I did a test. I was with I was with your sister, Jalen, and we were there. And mm -hmm. we're at the Hungry Bear. And I was like, let me do this test. There's like a line of like six people. <laughs> I was like, you stand in line. I'm going to order some fries on mobile order. I started the exact same time. I got my fries about 10 minutes before she got her. She did the walk-up thing, got her stuff. And I was, I was right next to her. I'm like, ah, this is great. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah, it's, and it's what and it makes it so much better too because it's not an extra charge. It's not like you got to pay an extra twenty dollars to use mobile order. Like it's and that's that's a good thing by Disney. I just hope that it doesn't get too famous because then they're gonna start charging. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Jalen has a good point though. Like becoming too famous because also aside from charging. There, it's also going to get busier, so there's going to be a line yeah. for the yeah, yeah, stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be convenient anymore. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And you know, yeah, you'll get those mobile order fees to cover the cost. Random. Mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the Bob Chapek tax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of mobile order, or back to the Disneyland membership program. So, man, you got the survey because you're a pass holder. I was only a, like the mini pass holder, so I didn't get it. But that little survey, I liked a lot of those things, those survey. Um, every single thing, things of reservation, of course. But, yeah, there was a cool, there's an interesting thing, you know, you know in your video, that the lower passes have all the perks and the upper passes have, like, lockout dates. See, so yeah, that's an interesting way to like, I feel like control the crowd, you know, I feel like people would, Disney is trying to push them to get the lower uh, membership right. people so they can, can, they know the attendance because they have to make a reservation for that certain day, whereas the no blockout crowd, they're trying to limit those because, you know, of what happened all the other years before those massive crowds. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Because the high pass is like $1,400. It's like mm -hmm. ridiculous. It's expensive. And then has no and then you don't even get and then you don't even get free parking. Yeah, no parking and no other, no rewards program or no max pass. I'm like, oh no, they're taking away my favorite things. Max and uh, like yeah, that's why I was like, I was like saying like, I don't even know what I'm going to do because it's like, I like the idea of having no blockout dates, but then again, I also like the idea of not having to pay twenty dollars every time I got a park. So, like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's wild. Actually, it's a kind of a weird way to approach things. It's almost like a, like a reverse psychology. Like, it's crazy, and you know, you know, regardless if that if that most expensive pass had nothing on it but just your name and a, it says Disney Pass. You know that people are gonna buy it anyways, just because it's a Disneyland pass. Oh and yeah, they mm. feel obligated that they have to buy the most expensive pass for. It's like they have to buy it to have a, a, um, a, a how can I say this? Not ego, but like a um, like like clout, kind of. Yeah, like yeah. look, I have the most expensive pass, and I'm amazing. Like, I'm down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I admit. When I first got my signature plus pass, 
I was going around shouting that to everyone. I'm like, ha, ah, everybody, look, I got the most expensive I mean, pass. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand people will definitely be buying it just to be the clown. Because <laughs> I used to do, I, you know, I'm a guilty person of that one. You know, it's kind of cool. I, I, I did feel like I had kind of power over it. But like, ha, ha. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 there's a difference between, like, you know, that's just, like, genuine excitement like i have a disney pass because they're hard to come by like they are super expensive and a lot of people are like damn i wish i had a disney pass yeah because they're super expensive so just uh i you know if you do have a disney pass that's a lot of that's a lot of credit like you were able to successfully own a disney pass i would flex it too yeah yeah no jalen's right but- like there's a difference between like genuine excitement and like just trying to like you know flaunt you know like yeah yeah definitely it's like those it's like those girls like on instagram that take a picture of their new nails but the, like, <laughs> yeah. their hand is like sitting on the steering wheel and you see the bmw logo yeah. <laughs> it's like come you on we all know doing. what you're trying to do here you not about your exactly nails you know exactly look at my, my my look my mercedes s550 but my new nails too <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was just um i made a theory um i was talking to my girlfriend and i was just like because she asked me she was like so what's gonna happen and i was just like well what i think I, I could be way off but this is what i thought was gonna happen is that they shut down the um old fast pass system and i thought that when they bring back the new system that um it was going to be the introduction of the magic bands because i know that has I don't know if, if I'm missing something or not, but I believe that they built all those um, those stands, those computers all around the park for so that we can have Magic Band. But I don't think there was like a, for our park, I know Walt Disney World, they all use Magic Band. But like our park, there, was, there wasn't like a, like a, here we go, now use Magic Band only. Like, there wasn't that formal announcement. So I, I thought that it was going to be like, they're going to shut this down so that they can open up the new system that involves the introduction of magic bands being more, um, being more important than what they were to Disneyland. I hope they do. Like, I would love to have the magic bands here in Anaheim. That would be, yeah. that would be so much more convenient. And like Jalen said, like, I'm surprised, like, I'm honestly surprised that it hasn't come about yet. Yeah. You know? Cause I knew, I knew that when they, first started building them you see them pop around around the park it was just like oh magic bands are coming magic bands are coming and disney world had the same thing going like magic bands so it was like we both had the same excitement like something new is about to come yeah. and they, they just persisted the side now nah, disney world is gonna get this and that's how that happened <laughs> so i yeah, believe it- we can um i think we can still use magic bands but they're not as useful as they are in disney world so yeah and it seems like disneyland is like really leaning on the past few years really leaning on like app based stuff yeah it, it's kind of weird and i think yeah. at disney world some of the features were taken away from the magic band and transitioned to the phone like the room key for the hotel and then they started charging for magic band so it seems like even disney world's trying to push away the magic band as more of a decoration instead of just a wow. like, useful thing. Well, that's weird, because that, that's like a real money maker for them. Yeah, yeah. it is. That's like, it's to them, to, to Disney fans, it's, it's like buying the next iPhone, and then you get a case. So, like, right. that's, yeah. they're making money off of that. Yeah, it's a good analogy. Exactly, That's exactly it. Yeah, so, weird. We'll see what happens with those good old magic bands. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool to have that Disneyland. But we have Max Pass, so haha, ha, Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> Max Pass is great. I thought I, I thought I was first. I was upset you had to pay for it, but now I'm okay that you have to pay for it. I love it. Great stuff. Until so it troops out it? and it's just like, bro, I need this Max Pass. I need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is your out of those options? Let's say all of those options on the survey. I don't know, Jalen, if you saw the survey or at least screenshot. I saw bits and pieces of it, but I never really like sat there and looked like looked at the whole thing. Or actually, because I know I saw a lot of people saying, 
there should be a customizable, like, build your own pass type of thing, which I think would be great. That would like, be great, yeah. yeah. So let's build our own membership program, starting with Chris. What, out of I don't know if you remember all the perks, but what what would your pass consist of or your membership card? If you had, if you could build your own. Wow. Um, if I could build my own, um, I'd want to have, I don't think no block out dates are going to be an option to be honest with you. I think that there, yeah, there's going to be the restrictions because of what's yeah. going on right now, but I like to get a pass with the least amount of block out dates possible. Um, I really like the feature that they mentioned on the survey about giving friends and family, um, uh, d- you know, discounts on tickets. I think that's a cool feature. I like that. Yeah, that would be great. That was a really cool feature. And then um, obviously free parking. And um, yeah, I mean, th- those are like my main stuff. Like, uh, yeah, the, the, the discount on food and merch is also nice, but I can kind of live with or without that. Um, the other stuff would be like the parking and the block out dates are much more of a, of an issue for me personally. Mm-hmm. How about you, Jalen? See, for me, it's just like, I want to, I want to be present as much as possible. If for any reason that there is a moment where they are say blackout dates no blackout dates i want to be like um already in motion for that like if i put no blackout dates then yeah it's it's gonna be blackout dates because there's covid and there's restrictions um i still want like if for any example like if if they lift the restrictions like make them less stricter than what they are and they're like okay Hey, we can go back to this now. I want my past to already have that, you know, oh, he has no black code date, so he's not blocked on his day, whatever. Um, I'm moving too strong on that, but yes, no black code dates. Um, you d- is the max pass already included? Um, yeah, yeah for um, some, well, I think some lower, of them are, some of them are, yeah. right? Yeah, usually the lower. Pass. Okay, so yeah. Mm. So I definitely have max pass on there. I need that. <laughs> And then um, free parking, because like um, like how you're saying is you know that's being having to pay twenty dollars every time you go, it that that adds up a lot. Yeah, so just that that um, convenience of just you know swipe my pass or look at my pass. Let me go. <laughs> it's free parking. Um, yeah, so free parking, and then. I didn't. Did, did you say that they offer discounts for tickets now? Yeah, that oh, was one of the yeah. options on the survey. Is that um, if you're a pass holder, certain tiers they offer you, um, you can get a discount on tickets for friends and family, which I thought was a pretty cool feature. Mm. And one of them, that's pretty one cool. One of the pass options I saw, it said two friends and families just come included already. So that's pretty cool. Like for free, that's pretty nice. Also, it's. It's reminding me of Magic Mountain's pass holder system. Magic yeah, Mountain has the, the system the, um, option where you, yeah, but yeah, I definitely have to do that because there's been so many times where I planned on going with other people, and it's just like, well, I can't go because it's super expensive. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm so type of discount. I agree, it is super expensive, and I don't, you know. If I'm going, I'd barely, you know, obviously with a pass, I wouldn't be paying for anything. But I'm saying, like, if I were to pay for a ticket, paying for one ticket is a lot. Paying for two ticket is stressful. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And I was just actually doing the math math on this with the parking. If you go to the park once a month for a year, mm-hmm. um, just on parking alone, you're going to spend 240 bucks. <laughs> it's parking 20 because i thought it was, it was was it 20 or 25 oh really i'm not sure man it's been so long I, since i've been to the park um because i feel like yeah I well let, let's 25. see what let's see what it is with 25 i'll, I'll let's see it's 25 yeah, I mean, if you're paying, if it is 25, then it's 300 yeah, a year. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, 2019, 
2019 rose from 20 to $25. Okay, I thought so. So yeah, $25, which is like even more than the $240. Like, wow, that's like, what, $500? Wait, yeah, yeah, around $500. Yeah, $500. So, so it's almost not even worth getting the cheaper pass if you're going to go a lot because you're going to be making up the pricing with the parking alone. It's a, it's a tough spot. It's a tough predicament. I don't yeah, because mm-hmm. gosh, she's gonna make it solve a puzzle before you get your membership. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Rubik's cube, man. It's like you gotta. <laughs> yeah, everyone's gonna be on the calculators and call up, call up, call up their lawyers. All right, so what's the best option here? <laughs> <laughs> like that's like that's what I'm saying. They really should put a build your own thing because then you put whatever you want, and then it comes up with a price for you based on what you choose. Right. Yeah. You can even like put like a, like a, like a price point on each item. Like, you know, it's, yeah. it's this amount of money for the parking. It's this amount of money for no block outs. It's this amount of money. And then when you check out, okay, this is your total, you know? Yeah. Like I really hope they add that. That, that wasn't an option on the survey, huh? But maybe people, you know, they ask to leave feedback, maybe enough people, right? I want to build my own option. Maybe they'll see it on social media, you know, Disney's. Yeah. Disney is. Disney's guy. definitely playing. Disney's definitely playing a chess game with everybody right now. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Wow, we goodness. Because you know Disney has like a team of lawyers, like totally constructing this password. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no way like, they aren't let's playing. As, let's make it as confusing as possible for more and hard as possible for people. And then, just, then, like, then again, <laughs> we do have to keep in mind it was just a survey, so it could be completely different from what we yeah. are expecting. Yeah, just like That's how the, the survey with the studio tour, everybody's panicking, like, oh my goodness, they're taking away the studio tour. That's not what happened. They were just trying to see where you guys' heads are at, playing a chess game. Right. And I think that's what Disney is doing too. It could be true reality, but I think. To mess with us and see how we're thinking. Yeah. Yeah, like man, I guess so. But I really, uh, what I liked about that survey, which I think when it initially opens, what they'll come out with is, <laughs> uh, you guys probably saw that like three day, five day, twelve day, but not like consecutive, but multi visit tickets, like a twelve day multi visit ticket. So you buy it and you have 12 days of the year to go. I feel like that's something they'll start off with initially when, you know, the park opens. So as like a mini pass or something, as a transition until they can increase the capacity. I love those things. I like my little three-day non-consecutive spring pass that I usually get there. <laughs> those yeah. Really help. Yeah, exactly. Like, and also for people who don't want to get a pass but want to still go a lot like a 12 day or seven day multi-visit ticket for seven days of the year is pretty pretty decent um let's see that so podo on twitter tagged you in a statement that he saw some security people going to cars land or something right and then he, he thought it might open soon. I hope it does. Goodness <laughs> gracious. So for shopping and dining, just to go there at night would be fantastic. And then, or at least Pacific Wharf, which was the next rumored, rumored little expansion past Grand Vista Street. Which one, which, uh, what do you guys think will open, what area will open next, if any area of California? Um- to be honest with you, like I would prefer Cars Land, but I think Pacific Wharf is more likely because Cars Land is really it like it's it's a big land, but the stores and stuff are really small. Yeah, with small. the COVID and the social distancing and the limited capacity, I think Cars Land would be kind of a nightmare to control. Mm-hmm. Um, the lines would be enormous to get into any store because the stores are like like broom closets. They're tiny. Yeah, you know? that is true. Yeah, so I think that the Pacific Wharf is way more likely because it's just a food court. So they can make a lot of money and you know there's a lot of options. I think it's way more likely than, than Cars Land. And also one thing too, we have to be kind of careful because I've, I've kind of I've kind of been down this road before with this where like, like you see executives 
in certain, like you have no idea how many times we've seen executives walking on the people mover track and how many rumors. Came oh, yeah. oh, you know, oh, there was an executive, there was a guy in a suit and he was up there <laughs> they're going to reopen it and it never happened, you know? So they, those executives could have been in that land for a million and a half different reasons. So I don't think it's going to, I don't think Cars Land is an option. I think that the Pacific Wharf is way more likely, way, way more likely. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because there, there's a home for food yeah, and dining and a home for outdoor dining there. Now, it would be really cool because I feel and like that's the whole idea of what I was just going to say. I, I, it, um, the whole idea of even California Venture even opening is for food and dining. So that that's their focus, that's their priority is getting. Um, getting as many people as they possibly can in safely, and then you know, with the food and dining. Now let's we got everybody in. Now let's make as much money as we possibly can. Yeah. And Pacific Wharf would be the better option as far yeah. as money goes. Also, too, it just goes to show what I was saying earlier that um, if that does happen, Carsland or Pacific Wharf, you can see now that they're they're slowly pushing that wall back more and more. Like it's like it, they're testing so. They tried downtown Disney. It was like, okay, this worked. Now we can go inside the park. They tried Buena Vista. Okay, this worked. Now we can go into, you can walk all the way to Avengers Campus now. Now, if they are going to move forward into opening Pacific Wharf or Cars Land, if you know your park, that's the next, like, next thing over is Pacific Wharf and Cars Land. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just like they keep pushing that wall back further and further. Eventually, the they're, the whole 90% of the park is, or 50% of the park is already going to be open. So I think this is them trying to slowly test what it's like to have people in the park safely. I think a lot of people are, are that go there, half of it is they're trying to make some money while the parks are closed. But I think the other half of it is that we're all test lab, test lab rats, and they're trying to see how, how, um, how we um, move around and how we react to being inside the park with restrictions. So, and if you notice that that wall, keep... oh no, keep going. Go ahead. Oh, and say and I you was know. Say that as you notice that. <laughs> the delay. Okay, there's like a two okay. second delay on your thing. <laughs> so, I was gonna say that. Um, <laughs> let's say the fifty percent of the park is open. Then oh god, yeah. then um maybe uh Bob Chapek and uh Josh tomorrow can invite Newsom and the strike teams down to see uh, yeah. how safe it is in themselves. <laughs> An- analyze the science and data. Yeah, the science <laughs> and data of basically yeah. a, a park being open without just the ride, stupid man. But- Which is still <laughs> like you know, I'm still like but that bothers me somewhat because it's like yeah i'm grateful that we're able to even be inside but i was always a ride type of person anyway so it's just like i it's gonna be so hard for me sitting there looking at him crazy coaster just being like you telling me i can't get on that right now like are you serious right now we're being real uh, right now uh, i can't uh, get you on can't, you can't i'm get standing on here or, looking at it you can't get on it or else you have a, a 70 percent chance more of dying if you get on that right 70 <laughs> percent <laughs> oh <laughs> Cause that's un- that's unsafe. Then credit uh, any ride, you have this eighty percent more chance of dying. Cause that's unsafe. Cause the science and data says so. Isn't that and, right? <laughs> and 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 YouTube, just so you, and YouTube, just so you know, uh, he's joking. So don't take down this video. Yeah, please don't it's take not, down the video. News. <laughs> <laughs> it is fake news, but somehow I think Newsom believes it. But still, they don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I'm just though. still confused because um, I swear they went to Disney World to see how they did it. Right. No, no, and no. They went to Disney, Disney World, World to ride some rides. Let's not forget that. <laughs> I mean, that that's even worse. Like, is, you went there and you basically <laughs> you got the best solution you possibly could have had. They have more capacity than we do. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No, J- Jalen, so, you hit the nail on the head with this. Like, what they that's the whole point. They went over there to check out how they do things and they come back and they're and they, nothing changed. Oh, we're just going to yeah. keep you guys closed. Yeah. Oh, well. And also, then don't forget the day before they went to 
Disneyland and Universal and the Pier. And of course, they had to check out their indoor queue situation. And, you know, they get to the end of the queue of Space Mountain. And, oh, look, there's some ride vehicles. I'm sure they took a ride on Space Mountain or something. Yeah. And says, oh, it's deemed unsafe. Let's keep the same same ones. I'm telling you, I could have I could have told them. I think all of us could have went up to those strike teams and told them how safe Florida was or not safe by YouTube videos we saw. I haven't even been to Florida in decades, but I can tell you what Disney, what Disney World was doing from YouTube videos, so I need to fly over there. Like, right. Yeah, and they're definitely laughing in our faces right now. If, it, if there was such thing as a Team Disneyland, as a Team Disney World, and we know there is, they are winning and they are kicking our butts right now because their park is open and we got a a team to go down there to look at that so that they can come back and open our parks and they still didn't do it. So now they're double laughing at us. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. I just no other <laughs> no other uh, parks in the world sent out strikes. And it's like you know that they place. crazy. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. We all got duped. We have to vote him out. Vote him out. <laughs> vote him out. I don't it, like liars. It's getting closer, like the recall thing. I think he's. I think oh, they're yeah, it's all, it's like, away now. Yeah, they're getting close. Look, so, <laughs> yeah, no credit or credits due. You know, I don't, I don't like, I don't like getting lied to, whether it's from the left or the right. I vote them all out. I don't <laughs> like lies. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, I'm, man. I, I am the same way. I, I, I respect that. One hundred percent. Yeah, and it's like to me, it's just like you know. At least I think what's going on is that a lot of those politicians, those people up in that building that are making these decisions for us, ruining our lives. <laughs> um, I think what it is, too, is that not a lot of them were actually into these type of things like theme parks and all that. So right. when they go to inspect to, you know, they, they can care less if disney world or disneyland opens or not like if it does mm-hmm. open they're gonna go back right to doing little their normal lives like it doesn't affect them exactly. so they're not as concerned as to get it right back open like they they can care less but, and they can know, care less if you're mad they're they're still getting their benefits they it's actually no. probably helping them more that disneyland isn't open that's why they're giving us so much of a hard time because it's benefiting them it being closed so Right, yeah. and you know, you know, they are concerned about uh, the French laundry in the wineries. <laughs> yeah, they are concerned about those for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's on what's on the menu at French Laundry? That's a big concern. <laughs> yeah, what's well, good? Oh, oh, so our dining's back. Good. Let's go right to the French. I wouldn't be surprised if he went back to the French laundry now that the out and he sat outdoors when he was inside the whole time. Crazy. I definitely, whole. I definitely think that. Um, Universal though is definitely on the back burner. Like if if there's a, a a race right now, Disneyland, Magic Mountain, Knotts, and Universal, Universal is definitely on the bottom because they're the only one that hasn't opened their gates yet. Right. And that is if true. they plan if they plan on making money beyond City Walk, they better they better open them gates because they're gonna they're not gonna make anything they don't open they have like you know you can open i would open up simpsons land for one that's a perfect to me at least you don't have to open up the ride but all those food rest food and restaurants right there and just the open area of that section that can work there's the lower lot that definitely can work to a certain extent because it does get hectic down there um but uh, there's a lot of an even better idea and i'm gonna say that better idea and about 10 seconds, hold on. Theme Park Wizards stay right here. We'll be right back. Hi, and we're back. All right, so as Jalen was saying, he said Universal should do something, and I agree. I have two ideas for good old Universal. <laughs> One, they should open up the upper light, upper lot. That would be great. I had, it would really help me out with these Super Nintendo World updates. But then, you know, it would be nice to sit and listen to the music, especially in the Wizarding World. Or, they don't want to do that. They should, I don't know, what would they call it? 
they should, because there was a one on one of those universal surveys, they asked what people would pay to ride the tram for as a separate, or the steel tour was a separate experience. So they should open it up as a separate, separate experience, somehow essential, and have people pay. We can go on the studio tour in the back lot. That'd be and cool. I think that would be, that would be, that can be uh, manageable because the, the the trams are so big that yeah, you so can big. easily can, social distance. You can do that. like every other other row if that, if, you know, that'd be. You, even if you did, even if you did at least a row in between and in between, like in the actual rows, like every other seat, then that that would work too. It, yeah, I the, mean, the, the, they have multiple trams, and the trams mm-hmm. are big enough that. Even if they did social distancing on the trams, they still can load a lot of people. Yeah, and to the fact I said every other other row, it's a really convinced the government that it's like you can't, you know, cough on something, you know. And and yeah, I feel like in any other state, every other row, what you said would have worked perfectly fine. But I feel like really it's convinced you up there in Sacramento. You have to like every other other row. But guess what? <laughs> we're like ten feet away, guys. Which would still hold a lot of people because they have like, like fifty trams and they're like what like ten cars long or something, like. Well, well, and Universal Universal is in a bind because of where they're located. They're in L.A. County, you know, yeah. Yeah. Is in Orange County, which is a little a little less populated. Mm-hmm. L.A. County to get L.A. County to yellow, which is what Newsom wants. Or it's requiring like nearly impossible. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Gonna happen. I mean, the, the theme park industry needs to fight back with that and get mm-hmm. it moved up. What well, what's right before yellow? Is it the orange? Yeah, orange. Yeah. Yeah, at least orange. You know, at least yeah, orange. Like orange. And on that front, I know Universal has at least L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti on its side because he's one of the ones that signed. The letter saying theme park should move up to orange so at least they have la county's backing on that should they need to fight the uh, people up north the angry yeah. grinches up north on that and it's like if, if if to me it's just like what what is what is it that's like turning these officials away from like yeah we can allow them open like they know they, they know what they're doing. They know that they're making it impossible for theme parks to open by putting that in that tier. They know what they're doing. So it's just like, what is it about theme parks that is turning them away? Is it that they're going to lose their... I, don't, I feel like there's something more going on than it just being safe. Because, yes, that's a priority. Oh, yeah, but definitely. I, yes, that's a priority is safety, but... If that was the case, then you would have went to Disney World, came back, you would have opened our parks because you would have seen that they have a safe procedure that we can follow that same procedure with a smaller park. Exactly. With less capacity. That's your whole thing, right? Yeah. Less capacity. We already have less capacity than they do anyways. If it was <laughs> <COVID. laughs> Yeah, like, see, look, well, yeah, something about safe. You know, I gosh, I wish I could get Bob Iger here on Theme Park Wizard because I want to find out why he left the task force. Gosh, that would be a great story. Oh, yeah. I would love to be a fly on that wall when that when that went down because, you know, like, because Bob Iger is like the deal maker. Like, you know, he made yeah. a deal with Marvel. He he makes it happen. happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. and for him to walk out of that room and say, you know what, I'm done. It must have got pretty heated. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> yeah. just knowing that is that something something was said that was like, well, we're going to have to work with them in order for us to get what we want. So and Bob Iger was like, no, that's, I feel like Bob Iger was trying to push the same thing we're pushing. Like we need our parks to be open because that's how we stay sane. Like that's how we stay mentally correct because <laughs> we have our theme parks. Right. And Bob Iger was trying to push for that. And they were trying to make a deal with the government to, to wait out. I've, it's just there's a lot going on besides just safety, because yeah. like I said, mm-hmm. if if it was about safety, number one, they would have seen that our park is ten times smaller than the four the whole mini city that's in Florida. Right. They would have seen that number one and been like, okay, we can make this happen. 
there's you could go all day talking about how our park is already safer than theirs. That's not a, it's, there's a lot going on behind the curtains mm-hmm. that we don't know about that's stopping not just Disneyland but all theme parks from opening in Southern yeah. California. If they really want to go on safety, then Newsom should look at his signs in beta and look at the map and that says COVID cases and hospitalizations are falling in 48 states, including Florida and Nevada. Nevada has a Circus Circus, which is an indoor theme park open. Oh, wow, that's an indoor exactly. theme park. Yeah. Now you have Governor Sisolak, who is also a Democrat, is allowing an indoor theme park to be open since June. It hasn't closed since June. That means but with the casinos in June. I don't understand. How. Wait, so did they, when they went to Florida, did they go to Universal too? Yeah, they went to Universal and uh, Disney World and rode some rides and we paid our taxpayers, paid for that nice vacation. Wow. They came back and they're like, oh, we didn't really do anything or talk to anybody, but we had a great time riding Expedition Everest and the Hulk. So. Yeah. Well, now we're back. Now let's go to Disneyland and ride Space Mountain and pretend to look at some safety rules. And, and, then, and, then, and it's like, <laughs> that that proves the point even more. Like you went to Universal, it's the same thing. Their park is twice the size of our park. Yeah, still... no, our, uh-huh. They have two parks, and we have one little park that's fairly easy uh-huh. to be safe with. So it's, you'd have to be real blind to the world to not <laughs> notice something that drastic. Like if you're sitting here and you're like, "Well, they just don't think it's safe." You have some serious research to do because it's the proof is in the pudding. If you if you've been there once, you know that all the parks in Florida are twice the size of ours. So if they can make it happen safely, there's no doubt we can. Yeah. Just there's you know a lot of people, and that's I think what's the problem is a lot of people are too blind to the world and they're one set minded and it's it's slowing us down because you know if you're constantly living in fear then you know you're giving them what you want what they want they want you to be in fear and you know do things that you shouldn't do or whatever and it's causing problems you know it's slowing us down i just want my theme parks to be open so somebody make it happen yeah exactly, yep. exactly Jaylen. And, and you're right like Jalen mentioned he made a great point um how he was like you were saying Jalen, that like like what's the angle here like they must be benefiting from the parks being yeah. closed and i agree with you i don't i i question everything with these politicians left or right mm-hmm. and there's a lot of shenanigans a lot of inconsistencies here that don't really add up there's something going on and i don't know what the i don't know what it is at first i thought oh maybe it's the election but that's long and done now and they're still mm-hmm. doing it yeah, so months ago. Yeah. Long, i don't understand this like i don't get it you know yeah and and it's like i feel like there was a deal made where it was just like, if they talk to Disney, they talk to Universal, they talk to Cedar Parks, they talk to uh, Magic Mountain, they talk to Six Flags, and they told them they're like, if you keep your parks closed for this amount of time, we'll make this happen. What that deal consisted of, I have no idea. I don't know what they benefit from. I don't know their their detailed specific benefits that they make deals with. I don't know. But there was some, I feel like there's definitely was a deal made for all these parks to be closed because even if it had nothing to do with Disney, Universal has the same situation. Smaller park, easier to open. Not going to happen. And Nasbury Farm, same thing. Magic Mountain, same thing. It's like they all have the same situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm very curious, you know, until Newsom says what the science and data of standing in the line and getting on a ride is, that, like, that, but SeaWorld, February 6th, SeaWorld's opening up as a zoo, basically the same thing Knott's was doing, but no rides. Knott's has the food festivals, there's probably a boys, boysenberry one coming soon, so I'm telling you, <laughs> Something about standing in the line and getting on a ride. I don't understand. <laughs> and I just think that look, this would be my last point because I'm running out of points for that. This is the topic. <laughs> but it's just like, to me, it's just like you're only making it worse by making people wait because now they're getting um, anxious and like riled up that when you do open, 
if your whole idea is that you want to, if, if you're trying to pose this image that you want to make it safe, you're not going to make it safe by having these people wait because they're going to build up this energy. It's like, okay, is it open? Is it open? Is it open? Is it open? Yeah, and no, you do crowd, finally open. Come back anyway. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Gonna make- as soon as you open those gates, you're going to get more people than what you expected because that's what you set up. You By you holding them back, it's like holding back a bull. Right. Yeah. You're holding, you're holding back so many people from the things that they are passionate about. If if you want to open it safely and slowly and you know a lot a lot of people at a time, you know, then you have to, you know, push that wall back more. You're being super strict. They're gonna get more riled up. Like, oh yeah, we're definitely going. We're definitely going. Everybody, almost every Disneyland fan will make an appearance to Disneyland within the first week of its opening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to cause problems. For one, that's not what they want. They want it to be like, okay, we're open, but don't crowd. But you know they're going to crowd. It's yeah. Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's like when, you, when, you, when, you're, when you're rope dropping the park and they tell you not to run. And yeah. the first thing everyone does is <laughs> <run>. <laughs> Ah, guilty. <laughs> guilty as charged, actually. <laughs> Especially last year when I, I was waiting in the with a massive crowd of people for my Rise of the Resistance reservation, and I I was on the phone and you're the cheers and the sa- sadness, and I'd be running over the galaxy's edge. Oh, times. <laughs> crowd of people. I miss a crowd of people. <laughs> oh, man, the. Um, so speaking of Galaxy's Edge, goodness, they found something to do at the Rainforest Cafe. It's going to be a Star Wars trading outpost. And I see that I was walking by yesterday and still had a long line over at the, where it currently is. I hope they, they think they'll put like a lot of money into it or they think there should be a little pop up. Like, they think they'll actually theme it or they'll just use the Rainforest well, and say it's the I- forward. I read a I read an article that they had Imagineers involved. So if they're involving Imagineers, Ooh. then it's it's uh, if it's involving Imagineers, then they're definitely taking it very serious. <clears throat> wow, that's good. That's good. Good because that yeah. means they'll be. <clears throat> yeah, they have Imagineers there working on it, and if that's the case, then they're taking it serious and they're trying to really make this a big deal. Then maybe a Star Wars cantina, wink, wink, huh? <laughs> and that just goes to show that, you know, they're trying to, it's like a, a complete opposite. Like California Adventure, you, they're allowing you to be inside and they're pushing that wall back to, so you can experience the feeling of being in a park again. And then it's like, Disneyland's like, nah, you're not coming in here. So we're going to bring Disneyland outside. <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> That's that's I think that's what's gonna start moving until they open those gates. That's gonna happen. Disneyland is gonna start bringing their main things out to downtown Disney, and California Adventure is gonna start opening their walls more. Yeah, man, that's a. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be a that's a Star Wars and fitting up. Us, Chris, you're a big Star Wars fan. I feel like you must be excited for this, especially because there's. Uh, I well, hope they won't move the drabs over. They have a nice new permanent sign. So I know you're excited for that. Huh? Yeah, no, I am. I, and, and it's weird because like the it's like Rainforest Cafe is oddly like a perfect building to kind of transform into like a Star Wars thing. Yeah, or is this yeah. Space? easily. Easily, yeah. It, it looks like some, like with a little, you wouldn't even have to really work at that, twerk it that much. It would really, it just kind of works as like a Star Wars base. So they, they that was a perfect spot for it. I think like, um, like Jalen mentioned, like Imagineers are working on it. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. And they're probably gonna have a whole bunch of new like Mandalorian merch and stuff like that. So I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be great. When does that open? Do, do you know, uh, Ethan, when that opens officially, or did they say? I have no idea. I haven't heard anything. And do you know anything, uh, Jalen? Um, it from the last I checked, it was like late February. They said, but I'm not. I'm not gonna bet that. Like that's the true, um, true, true est- estimate. Um, ETA, and I just think it's just a lot of cosmetics they're doing. 
you know, to the top to get that for real. Like, you know, this is Star Wars. I don't think they're doing anything like, um, like he was saying, I don't think they're doing anything major to the building, but just a lot of just like, they'll pull a plate up that looks like a Star Wars mm -hmm. mechanic or something like that. Just so you can, you look at it and be like, oh, that's something Star Wars, you know? So yeah, then obviously the inside. Um, I just, that, that just made me think about something, you know, had that plan gone through with the hotels that they were going to build, we wouldn't even be seeing this mini Star Wars store. It'd still be, uh, it wouldn't even be there. That whole building wouldn't be there. I think they planned on demolishing all those buildings for the new resort. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just crazy to think like one thing goes wrong and everything goes wrong because they, they purposely closed the theater, Rainforest Cafe, the ESPN Zone so that they can demolish them and none of that happened. So now we just have all these ancient things that we I missed. I missed two-story Rainforest Cafe and the ESPN Zone and obviously the theater, you know, the convenience of having a theater in downtown Disneyland that all was like super fun and super cool. And just to see it just all go away because something else went wrong. It's just sad to see. It's sad it to see the Rainforest Cafe mm -hmm. go away. Definitely. Yeah, like, well, and that's funny. <laughs> Back then, Anaheim and Disney were fighting, and now they're best friends teaming up with each other. <laughs> Hilarious. What a difference three years makes, huh? <laughs> well, you know, and Jalen was talking about, like, uh, deals being made. I would not be surprised. I think he's right on that. I wouldn't be surprised at all if there are deals being made. And I would, like, if, if that hotel eventually gets built, um, they'll get Disney will probably get the tax breaks they want now. Yeah. Like that. Mm. Yeah. That's they don't have to the move it. They don't have to move it 500 feet to the north or whatever. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. These people are hilarious government so, uh, people. And lastly, here, the good old WandaVision. Yes. yes. Man, episodes one through four, especially. Number four, I know Chrissy liked this one through three the best, but four. Wow, what a great show. Oh, I can't wait till number five. When we saw Vision's dead, oh, spoilers, Vision's dead. Oh. <laughs> like, wow, that was, um, I was like, whoa, she's really animating that man's dead core. It, wow. No, I, I <laughs> seen that scene and I let my heart drop to my <laughs> stomach. I was just like, whoa, that caught me off guard. It is super creepy. Yeah, yeah. That was like the creepiest thing the MCU's ever done. <laughs> well, you know, Ethan, actually, my opinion on episode four has changed since I, since I texted you yesterday. I, mm -hmm. I actually like it a lot more now. Like, I watched it again. Oh, yeah. But, like, Look, like, yeah, the sitcom stuff. I loved all the sitcom, I loved all the sitcom stuff, but that was really dope how they recreated it. But like, you kind of needed eventually. You couldn't have it just be a. It, it had to transition eventually into like to reality. <laughs> exactly. So you know, as much as I miss those the, that that world because it was pretty cool, this needed to happen. They, you know, they needed to get into like the context and what's going on. And I love this show. This is like honestly one of my yeah. favorite MCU things. It's it's so incredibly cool. Um, it just it it blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind. It's definitely one of those shows where you never know what's going on. You're always trying to guess or figure out. And it's just like I was I was watching a breakdown of the last episode, and he was making so many points about how um, you know he thinks the guy that I watch. He thinks that Mephisto is the antagonist and he's the main villain in this. Um, mm -hmm. And he makes so many points that that's true. And it's just like, I, I believe that for a second and I watch it for myself. I'm just like, but dang, like Wanda's really scaring me. Like she's really stepping in her own game. Like yeah. that she's really becoming her own villain. And I know that um, for the Doctor Strange, the new one that's coming out, she is the main villain. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's, it's so many connections to that. And I'm just like, is one the, the, the villain or is someone else pulling the string? Like, and it's just that um, suspense in that, like, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who it is. They don't give you that clear, like, oh yeah, it's definitely Wanda or oh yeah, it's definitely someone else. Like, 
And that's the, the thing I love about it is you're constantly trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, and it's cool how it's like this show does so many different things. Like it was a it was like a vintage retro sitcom, but then in episode four, it kind of pivots into almost like a detective drama. You know, when yeah. Agent Wu was putting up all the all the people and the um, you know, uh, on the board. That's funny because it's like, darn, this person's been cast in the show. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bro. and he, he set it up like he they, like now they're gonna try to piece it together and investigate, you know, various people. It, now it's like a detective drama, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like it does. The show does so many things, but it does each thing so well. I don't know, Kevin Feige. This guy is like unbelie- unbelievable. Yeah, and. And um, what he did say is, I think a lot of people missed is that the only reason why Jimmy Wu showed up to Westview is because he was on a missing persons case. Mm-hmm. Had nothing to do with Wanda, had nothing to do with Vision. He came here because there was someone missing from his witness protection program, I think. And that's why he was at Westview. So all those IDs he came up with, if he would have ID'd that person, there would be no story. That would have mm-hmm. been the end of it. So Clearly, that person that's missing, he still hasn't found. And mm-hmm. it isn't Wanda, and it isn't Vision. Mm-hmm. So, and and you know what's really and you know what's really trippy is, is the name WandaVision. I know it's just the name of the show. But that's the only that, that word. That's only play on the words. Like, yes, WandaVision television. It's a Wanda show. It's Wanda and Vision. It's so cool. The most it's creative trippy. name. <laughs> Like, it's, it's, it's Wanda and Vision. It's Wanda's Vision, right? Like and then, like, but like Wanda Vision, like television, like television like awesome show. It's like, whoa, that's like the most creative name. Jeez, Marvel does everything perfectly. I love it. <laughs> it it's it's absolutely it's brilliant. It's it's just, it's 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 really seriously brilliant. Like it just I, and like. I really, I can't wait to see how this goes. And then there's people talking about maybe Doctor Strange showing up and stuff like that. I think that would be pretty cool if it happens. Yeah. It, yeah. I think in the, someone said, I, I heard the last episode will be showing up. Like, I heard someone theorize that, you know, he was the doctor trying to leave town, you know, the in show doctor. Like, oh, he was yeah. like, you know, he was like, he's, you know, disguising himself. That would be really interesting. But person of interest, Dottie, no, she kind of creeps me out that character. Uh, uh, I think that it's Agnes. Yeah, it can't be Agnes. Agnes. But then I thought some, I thought, oh, what I'm just, man, Catherine Hahn, or Agatha, or oh, Ag, Ag, is that, what's her name? Is that, Agnes. Oh, Agnes. Oh, yes, Agnes. Okay. Isn't she playing Agatha the Wit? Well, she's yeah, her? so that's, that's what they're trying to theorize is that obviously her name is Agnes so mm-hmm. if they're if if what 90% is likely they're pulling this from comics Agatha is a witch mm-hmm. and she works with Mephisto so oh wow she thinks her that, husband Ralph yeah we don't know who Ralph is they <laughs> yeah. Agent Wu never Agent Wu never ID'd a Ralph so mm-hmm. he could be that missing person and she and, and he these, never ID'd uh, Agnes either Right, he had her picture, but no ID, no, no New Jersey ID. So mm. obviously, they don't know where she's from. <clears throat> um, then the thing with Ralph is, we've never seen him in the show yet. They keep bringing her, she keeps bringing up her husband. My husband, husband Ralph. Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> but we haven't seen not one image of Ralph, number one. Number two, there's all these hexagons and um, the, the these hexagons that form where they shouldn't form and then the hexagon there, hexagon there. That's obviously a sign. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just a lot of signs moving. And then obviously in the comics um, with Wanda's children, they were um, created through Mephisto. Mephisto used that energy to, um, his whole motive is to take Wanda's energy and use her powers. So he uses her kids as a leverage um, and he um, basically uses his powers to manipulate Wanda <clears throat> into having kids with vision so that he can use them to get leverage towards taking over her and her powers. So it just, it's just a lot of connections. Like, you know, they are having kids mm-hmm. now. Um, and then, you know, vision, he's not all the way there. Obviously, Agnes is suspicious. Mm-hmm. Herb, Herb is cutting through a wall with a chainsaw. 
and it's just like it's a lot of glitches yeah. going on. That's like, oh, yeah. oh boy, he's malfunctioning. Herb is malfunctioning here. He's cutting that was funny. Off. <laughs> yeah. So but, yeah. And That's what I besides do. the story itself, <laughs> the, the cast, like Catherine Hahn. Wow, she does a great job in that role. Like, oh my goodness. Like she is and Elizabeth Olsen, they invoked the 1950s sitcom style like perfectly. And perfect. I haven't seen him. I haven't seen a 1950s sitcom, but it looks perfect. Like, oh my goodness. Like, Just watch Twilight whole... Zone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, yeah, I have seen that one. But, and, and but... honestly, in terms of Elizabeth Olsen, the 1970s Wanda fits her well. Like, that style looks good on her. Like, she... yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I, li- I like her. <laughs> the long hair, the, the little technique color there. Great stuff. And the whole cast is a fantastic show. They should all get awards. All of them. <laughs> I think something that was underrated too is how they showed us um, post, post snap, everybody coming back from the whole Yeah, snap. that was a really yeah. cool scene. That was a cool, like, you get to see the. Uh, different because you know the way that the Russo brothers when they had an interview they were just like yeah that first snap to bring everybody back was peaceful you know birds were chirping you know how God called his wife his wife called him everything was you know seemed peaceful but in reality if you're not like where Monica was at if you're in a hospital that's chaotic because mm-hmm. there's people popping up that they pose as dead or how you know now you know that nobody's seen that aspect and uh, the guy I was watching he was just like he made a joke he was just like yeah if the hospital was bad i wonder how bad disneyland was if uh, <laughs> people just started randomly coming back oh yeah <laughs> yeah it'd be crazy popped yeah. up in the middle of space mountain <laughs> <laughs> oh, man yeah and then uh i'm a massive cat dennings fan Mostly because I think she's just beautiful. So I'm glad she's back. My goodness, I love Darcy. Darcy and Jimmy Woo. Jimmy Woo with the card trick from Ant Man and the Wasp is great. Yes, that, that was a cool one. Like everything. Mm-hmm. Every little detail, Kevin. Every little detail, Mr. Foggy. You should just <laughs> go over all the franchises Star Wars, Marvel, uh, Jurassic I, Park. <laughs> so. Did you say Jurassic Park? <laughs> I feel like Kevin Foggy would be like a, like a mysterious Jurassic Park movie with the cool end credits scene. That would be, I feel like you would do a great Jurassic World movie. <laughs> um, I was just going to say that um, uh, as far as the f- future MCU projects, I think the one I'm most excited for is um, Fantastic Four. I can't wait to see how the MCU includes them in the MCU and how it's gonna like casting movie wise. I think if Kevin Feige's in charge, it's gonna be really dope. Yeah. Can't wait to see the MC, yeah, MCU's, 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 MCU's Galactus. Oh, I could just tell right now it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, and then great. Loki. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be good for too. Loki. Oh, I love Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, and that, and that trailer for Loki surprised me because for some reason, I don't know why I was kind of assuming that Loki was going to be like really like kind of like a comedy. I don't know why I thought it was going to be a comedy for some reason, but it but the trailer was pretty dark. It kind of reminded me a little bit of like the Joker movie or something. It was pretty like yeah. dark. Mm-hmm. Very cool. serious. Yeah, it was cool. I liked it. That would be pretty exciting. Oh, boy. Well... Thank you all for joining on this lovely Sunday afternoon morning. And uh, shoot, let us know where you can find you guys. Let's start with Orange Grove. Get them to 3,000. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, Orange Grove 55. And Jalen, where could they find <clears throat> you if you want them to find? <laughs> uh, I haven't gotten YouTube started yet, but you can find me on Instagram at Astro Mizzy. You heard it here first. Astro Mizzy build up his Instagram uh, base so when he gets to YouTube, he can already start off with a thousand subscribers. Yeah, get it, get a YouTube channel, Jalen. That'd be awesome, dude. Uh, I'm trying. Yes, yeah, so then we can film at Downtown Disney. 
All you need is your iPhone. That's all I use. Or except for yeah, my I just I just got the 12 Pro Max. So oh, it's good. You have the Dolby Vision video. <laughs> Man, well, stay tuned for his YouTube channel, guys, and have a fantastic day. Oops, I almost pressed the wrong button.